RGB, RGB, RGB! It's like it's the only damn thing anyone talks about these days. Even us! I'm sure you guys saw the RGB build guide. Well, one of our writers, Jake, saw it too, and in a fit of what I can only describe as nerd jealousy, concocted up his own version of it in an attempt to go even further over the top by doing RGB hardline water cooling. And given how much you guys hated the anti-RGB build, I mean, this is clearly what you want to see, so I greenlit it. Corsair's Void Pro gaming headsets feature microfiber mesh fabric and memory foam ear cups, as well as custom-tuned 50mm neodymium drivers. Check them out at the link below. The first step in any build is always part selection. Oh, oh, no! Wait, this time it was actually pretty interesting. There were some legitimately tense moments when Jake wasn't sure if he was going to be able to one-up James by finding RGB components for every single part of a water cooling loop. But in the end he did, so moving on then. An RGB CPU block wasn't hard to find. However, most of the products on the market were either cheap knockoffs or just downright hideous. Fortunately, our friends over at EK had the perfect solution, their Strix Z270E Monoblock. It keeps the VRMs and the CPU nice and chilly while also looking dank AF. This was actually our first time using a full cover motherboard block, so we'll spend a little more time on this. First, the stock motherboard VRM heatsinks need to be removed, then you cut and stick on the included thermal pads. You may also need to remove the plastic IO fascia piece, being careful with any connected cables while you do it. <laughs> yeah. Then, with everything prepped, we put our 7700K in, since this is a gaming machine, and applied a generous amount of thermal goop. RAM was next. And while we actually tried to stay away from non-water cooling RGB parts to keep the focus on the RGB loop, G-Skill Trident Zs are just too irresistible. So we went with a four by eight gig config to get all them slots populated and man, man does that ever look good. Next, it was time to lay the monstrous Thermaltake Tower 900 on its side and remove the glass to make installation easy, or at least possible. In went the IO Shield, and in went ASUS's Strix Z270E, a solid motherboard choice for its ample features, overclocking capability, and most importantly, compatibility with our RGB block. As for the GPU, we went with NVIDIA's flagship GTX 1080 Ti, because why the heck not, right? But getting an RGB block for the graphics card ended up being one of the most difficult parts to source for the build. Most of what's out there in RGB is for the base 1080. Fortunately, Fantex is a lot better at building sexy products than they are at making a website. So after we overcame some bad SEO, we set to work getting it installed. It did take a while, but man is it ever worth it. And just wait for when it's lit up. By far the most time consuming part of this build was the hardline tubing. Even after all the time spent planning out the loop, things changed as they always seem to do. And hardline tubing is challenging enough when you're just doing basic plumbing, when all of a sudden you want to power every one of the fittings to light up your tubing, well, it adds a whole new dimension of difficulty. Every single fitting needs to be individually powered. Ah, holy crap. Let's talk about the rest of the cooling system. The star of the show here is easily the dual quad 140 millimeter radiators installed in the back. Now look, I know, this is basically the most overkill possible setup, and we could probably cool like four thread ripper systems with it, but if you haven't come to expect overkill here at Linus Tech Tips, then what kind of fan are you? Speaking of fans, the obvious choice was our LTT edition knock to a fans. 
Again, because this is about RGB water cooling, not RGB air cooling. Now the original plan for holding our tubes in place, where they're converted to soft tubing behind the motherboard tray, was to 3D print some mounting brackets on the Ultimaker 3. But then came a stroke of Jerry Rig University engineering genius. How about tension mounts with zip ties and anchors at the back? And it worked! So with that system in place, the tubes were cut to a manageable length and then finished off with an RGB fitting tied to a 90 degree angle to adapt to our soft tubing. Hard in the front, lots of wiggle room in the back. We actually really like this style of hardline since it makes maintenance much easier. Finally, cable management. Oh lordy, cable management. Even with sexy cable mod cables, Running the 8 million individual wires for every fitting around the back was a challenge to say the least. But look at this! It's actually coming together quite nicely. All of the fittings conveniently plug into a single controller, giving the tubes a really pleasing glow that should be made even more impressive once Primo Chill's opaque white coolant concentrate is added. Finally, time to fill. Our CPU and GPU are actually on completely separate loops, so we started on the GPU side. These gargantuan radiators take a huge amount of water to fill, but we eventually got them both filled up and with zero leaks. I'm impressed. Which isn't to say that we didn't forget anything. We had to unscrew the cap of a filled reservoir to put on the RGB reservoir holder rings, but it was totally worth it. Then, the cherry on top was a non-RGB Corsair MP500 SSD that we couldn't install earlier because someone else had it in their test bench. Herp -derp. Finally though, we added the coolant concentrate, actually plugged in our monoblock, and damn! Haters gonna hate, but if you're being honest with yourself, I think you have to admit this is one of the best looking builds we've ever done. And if you're not ready to admit that yet, well here's what I think will be enough uninterrupted straight PC pornography, courtesy of Grand Camera Master Brandon, to change your mind. You can take your time. You can choose your words. Let me down real easy. Let me This video has been brought to you by TunnelBear, the easy to use VPN app. Oh, I have new talking points. Bear trivia is a trendy topic at parties these days, but sometimes you just don't have enough facts to back up your opinion. Fortunately, we have some random bear trivia for you. Here are a couple quick ones to keep you in the game. Bears might look slow and clumsy, but they can run up to 30 miles an hour for extended periods of time. If you see a bear, don't try to outrun it. In Alabama, it's illegal to keep or train bears for the purposes of wrestling. If someone tries to sell you tickets to bear wrestling or asks you to hold their seat while they buy some honey, just say no. Now, kick the bear factor up another notch with the app that roars from your pocket while it encrypts your data. Try Tunnel Bear for free, no credit card required, at tunnelbear.com LTT. What the hell was that? 
So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked, you can do that. But if you liked the video, get subscribed, hit the like button, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is a link to our merch store where we have cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.